I'm Madison McGann, and today I'm going to do a makeover on this dresser that I was recently gifted. And as it turns out, it's real wood. So I'm going to turn it into an apothecary cabinet. And as you can see, the drawers need to be fixed. So we'll be fixing those after we get it all ready to put together. And let's get started. Okay. You look great. Okay, so the next part of my project is that I'm going to fill these. Now, as you can see, they're pretty substantial, so I think I'm going to fill them a little bit with wood and then put my putty in. But now that I've gotten all of these off, if you're a DIYer, always, always save your old hardware. You'll find a use for it, I promise. So I'm not going to use these because they're not going to go with my theme, but I am going to save them for later. So let's get started in filling these holes. And I am going to leave some of the uh, scratches and all of that because I want it to look like an old apothecary cabinet. But there are cer certain parts like right here that will need to be filled along with the holes because I won't be using these handles. Picking on me on my parking spots, huh? So what is that stuff? This is the dowel and um, the wood that I need to fix the drawer. So Alright. Oh, I got so it. We're next to a uh, Rolls Royce here at Home Depot. Pretty cool. Alright honey, you ready to go fix your dresser? I am. All right. Okay. Measuring the dowel. I'm going to cut and put in there with putty and then fill the hole up. And just fill it in. which is a really dark brown and I'm doing the uh, stain and poly all in one which is really important because that will help it get really thick and I'm not actually going to have it stained uh, for a finish I'm just going to do stain it underneath and then I'll be painting it but I want this stain because I'm going to have it um, distress quite a bit and I want the stain to show through. So what I've done is I have sanded off all the artificial shiny finish because I want this to look very much like beat up and old and um, used, well loved, right? Because it's going to look like a, an old apothecary cabinet. Okay, so now you're on your second coat, right? Uh, no, this is about the fourth coat. Oh, that's a lot of coats. Yeah. I want it really thick. And because I'm going to put a white paint over the top, and I'm going to be chipping that white paint. And so what I want to show no. underneath is old stain no. that's, you know, um, built up in some areas and really thick and just looks really super old and so I'm getting there so I think after this last coat I'm going to be putting I'm going to start putting my white paint on 
Now that everything has been um, stained, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint each one of these little squares. It's uh, a white color. So I'm going to have most of it uh, stained and then this painted white. I'm going to be using um, some petro petroleum jelly to uh, put on there sporadically so that I can get kind of some cracked looking uh, chipped paint. And then uh, another um, thing that I'm going to do is I'll be using the white paint and then I'm going to use a high heat of my hair dryer right afterwards. And what that'll do is it'll make it look um, cracked. And so I'm not going to use like a crackle medium or anything like that. I'm just going to use it so it has finer cracks from just using a high heat. So, but first I'm going to tape tape off the drawers and, and get them started. before I start distressing it. So I'm just gonna take a, um, some sandpaper and just kind of distress it. And then I'm gonna be putting a colored uh, wax on it, but I'm actually gonna put it over the whole thing. So um, I don't want it quite as shiny, but um, I want it to look a lot more aged, but the paint is just a little too fresh for me to do it right now. So I'm gonna let it sit for a while. So all I'm going to do right now is just kind of uh, age the uh, paint a little bit by sanding some of it down and creating maybe some um, nicks in the paint. And I just want it to look old. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of my stain showing through. So that's what I'm going to be doing to all of the drawers and then I'll be waxing. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just putting on some clear wax. And as soon as this dries a little bit, I'm going to put on a colored wax to make it look uh, aged. This is just an old, old, old paintbrush, which is why I'm using this, because I don't want to get any on the stain. I'm going to uh, do the handles. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm going to be equal. Three and three quarters. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is make sure that I the tape is exactly the same uh, length down, right? So what I'm going to do is take one of my little handles here. figure out where the middle is put this right in the middle of that tape and then just take my pin
Okay, now I gotta do the rest. Okay, so the top, um, even though I've stained it, the top of this is not really ideal. It's got a lot of flaws in it. So I want to keep some of the wood look, but I'm going to kind of hide it a little bit. So I'm going to be painting a white border around here, and I'm going to be using also um, some crackle medium so that I get a little bit of a crackle in my paint. And then I'm going to put a stencil on it. So uh, this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to measure off the, uh, the outer corners and do that in white. Okay, so when you paint over the top of uh, crackle medium, it does have to be a little bit thicker because you want to do it in one coat. And it's better not to go back and forth over a section too many times because you don't want to uh, ruin the texture. And you can ruin it by going too far over it. Um, or over it too many times. You can see how it's kind of doing that there, which is okay for this one because I want it to be really textured. But if you'd like just a nice crackle like this, you don't want to go over it too many times. So top part's looking good. And after just a few minutes, you can see that it's crackled and come through, and once it dries, it'll be kind of what you see on this edge here. I am measuring to make sure that I'm pretty close to the middle on both sides, so... So I need to go up. So I'm going to be putting on the um, this stencil on the top in white. Just taking a, a sponge and just dabbing it uh, with chalk paint and getting it in here. And I always like to put it on a paper plate so that I can get some of the excess off. So when I did a uh, live tutorial for a, um, a DIY magazine, they, um, I used a, um, a stencil brush, and I usually stencil brush like that. And somebody had told me 
don't do stencil brushes the the best way to do it would, would be to use like a makeup sponge so I used a makeup sponge and it bled in my um, in my stencil but that doesn't it's not that important because my whole intent was to sand it down so it was barely there anyways because as you can see with all the crackle and stuff I want it to look old and like it's been around a while so once I sand it that's gonna take a lot of the excess off so it'll look fine I'm not too concerned with it but I one thing for sure don't use a makeup sponge just stick with a stencil brush so